Okay, so what I like to do is I apply a little uh, coat of the Permatex Thread Sealer and I just do a portion of the threads because it doesn't go all the way in anyway. And I also carefully apply some of the uh, Thread Sealer to the uh, pump itself and you know these are um, tapered so this is probably unnecessary and but I wouldn't use like uh, Teflon tape or anything like that because it's, it's not gonna work anyway but this is just a little peace of mind I guess you can call it so it's totally optional now to install this of course you wanna be uh, careful make sure that the that the piece is not cross-threaded as, as you insert it and uh, get it um, to the approximate direction where it's supposed to be pointing and this portion here is to be pointing in this direction so what I use is uh, just an adjustable crescent wrench and actually the, the thread sealer helps lube um, the piece enough so you can position it and that is roughly the position and once you go under the car and you start installing the uh, the lines you can always make last minute tweaks they're gonna be minor and um, but you can always go back and undo this a little bit if necessary I roughly put it into um, I set it at about a 90 degree uh, position in relation to the pump itself. So, about there. So when, when you're done, all you wanna see is a very thin line of the uh, sealant. Keeps things looking good and clean and professional, I believe. Next, a look at the uh, gaskets. I ordered some. There's one there. And this is the one for the uh, base plate. So, yeah, perfect. And you want to buy, I think anyway, the good stuff. I buy the Felt Pros. I really like them. They work great, and this is the one for the uh, pump itself. So, and this is very basic stuff, but uh, what I like to do is use a couple of dabs of um, weather stripping, and that's mostly to keep the, um, the gasket in place so it doesn't shift as you're trying to uh, put this back in the car. And uh, the same thing applies for the um, for the pump gasket, just a couple of dabs, and uh, these are excellent gaskets. They will seal properly without uh, the need for any help from glues and uh, RTVs or stuff like that. You don't need that. So next, let's talk about the the rubber hoses. As you can see. The previous owner or someone he hired had used um, basically a straight fuel line for the connection between the pump and the fuel delivery line. Well these are fine and they used um, fuel line hose as it's marked here. The problem is you need an S shaped line for this thing to work properly and it's obvious here that this one had kinked quite a bit because of the um, once you install this it has to go up almost at a 90 degree there so it can clear the um, the chassis of the car and then you make the connection at the very top with the uh, with the line coming from the tank 
well, what's going to happen? This is going to happen. You're going to have a heck of a of a kink there, and, and that is never a good idea. So, like with the gaskets, get the right the right hose, and and avoid a lot of problems. Usually, they come with the correct uh, clamps. These kind of snap ring or whatever they're called, these clamps, they're great. And that's all you need. These have um, flares, so it's gonna make a good connection and all you need are, the, is, are these um, type of clamps. I usually stay away from these cheapo clamps. Now, you can also buy a molded um, return vapor um, or vapor um, fuel vapor hose, a return hose, I call it. And they had used this motorcycle kind of, I call it a motorcycle fuel line. And this thing, first of all, is hard as a rock. Um, it is, again, the, the, the wrong, they used the wrong uh, hose. So, in this case, what I what I like to do, just to save a few bucks, is buy again. You have to buy a fuel hose. When you go to the uh, auto parts store, they will sell you something that is marked as fuel line. Now I bought two feet of the of the stuff, and this one has very gentle curves, really. So all you have to do is just measure the approximate size and then with good hose cutters just I like to be a little generous when I make my cuts because I can always go back and, uh, and trim precisely to whatever size I need and we'll do that uh, once this is back in the car. But again, this will work just fine. And uh, and you save a few bucks by buying, again, you have the option of buying the uh, molded uh, line, but uh, this will do the, uh, the job just fine. And one more suggestion I have is to spend a few bucks and get these um, hose pinching pliers. They are very inexpensive and uh, you will see once I start the uh, installation of the fuel pump how handy and uh, practical they, they can be. Oh and before I forget, if you don't have these and uh, you're in a pinch no pun intended. You can always get by by using locking pliers like like these. Uh, just be careful not to damage or cut the hose when you're pinching, but uh, they'll get you they'll get you out of a jam. So these are good to have as well. One detail I wanted to mention is I like to disconnect the the fuel line to the carburetor from the pump to the carb and the reason being is because it gives me a little more adjustability under the vehicle and then when that is set I can come up here and finish reattaching the, um, the fuel line as needed so you may want to look into doing something like this if you need to um, replace your fuel pump That's it. You just want to make sure that the gasket is aligned properly with the holes. And that's that's it.
Okay, so just to go over some of the basics when it comes to the fuel pump, there is this plate that goes between the block and the fuel pump itself. So the fuel pump, once you have this installed with a gasket, of course, against the block, held by two small bolts, then you would install the pump like this and it's secured again to the block by two bolts. So this is very basic and easy to understand. However, the problem for a lot of people seems to be that at some point they have trouble connecting. Let's get this out of here. Making contact once you have this in place. You have to get this over it and at the same time this will eventually make contact with this push rod. The problem is, and it's easy to see why, this push rod is going to be inside the plug at an angle so it's going to try to slide out. And there is a couple of ways of addressing this. Uh, my preferred method is just to use grease and I'll show you how in a sec. The block also has a provision on the side which I've never really used. It makes a lot of sense though. You remove a short bolt. Mine has, I believe, um, a bracket attached to the uh, bolt. But again, that bolt goes through. And what it al allows you to do is to use actually one of the pump bolts. You remove that one, you screw this one in, and eventually it touches, makes contact with a push rod. You push the rod all the way in, so you have plenty of room to, to install the pump. And you tighten the bolt enough so it makes contact with the push rod and it holds it in place. Of course, then you have to remove the bolt. Make sure you, you uh, replace the original one. You don't want to have that making contact with the rod at all times for obvious reasons. And second, you don't want to forget about installing that bolt because otherwise you'll have a leak, an oil leak. So my preferred method for doing this is to use grease. Add some grease here to the top and then push it in and then another gob of grease at the bottom. So whenever this makes contact, it's installed, it'll have some lubrication. Eventually the grease will just kind of liquefy. It's not an issue and then you get the normal drip of oil and that uh, takes care of it. So again, I've seen a professional mechanic, true story, years ago wrestle with one of these things and I, I, I didn't know the, the secrets, if you would. And he wrestled for like a half an hour with this thing cussing. I mean, <laughs> it was horrific. And then he's like trying to put like a, a little screwdriver and a pry bar and more cussing. I mean, totally unnecessary. And the guy was a pro. I, I know the guy. He was a professional. Uh, I guess nobody told him about this thing. So, and he was older than I was. So he should have known. But anyway, so those are the, um, again, secrets on how to install one. I'll provide a link or two if I can find them. Uh, there's plenty of uh, tutorials on how to install these pumps, so it's, it shouldn't be difficult. So next I am going to, I scraped the remnants of the old gasket and I'm gonna attach this plate. Again, there's no room for me to film under there, so I'll, I'll just install a few things. These two little bolts secure this. No need for, um, or TV or anything like that. These gaskets will seal the uh, this this um, oil galley uh, properly. You don't have to worry about that. And of course, before you install that plate, 
You want to have the push rod ready. I like the red and tacky grease. You want to use something that is going to be thick enough. Believe it or not, once you get this in there, it'll create almost like suction. It'll hold that in place. So that's pretty much all you need. Maybe put a little bit here in the middle for good luck. That's it. The grease is holding that against the camshaft now. I'm going to put another gobble grease here at the very end. sure that's still pushed in there so that's good so we have the plate on next is installing the pump and again I wish I could bring you along for the for the trip but <laughs> it ain't gonna be possible I don't know if this is gonna work but whatever fuel pump Push sure it's all the way in. Gotta maneuver this thing through here. Ah. I don't think that bolt has. I don't know if it's in place or not. Nope. Not yet. Trying to get at least one thread started, but not having much luck here. Violence, strong language. All right. I don't have a microphone, so I hope you can hear me. But I got this one installed. Everything went well. You're right. Um, I never used one of those little, um, whatchamacallit, those uh, screw clamps. I don't like them, but. I had to, the other one actually snapped, so. But everything is connected, everything is tight. And I think that um, at least that project is done. So, next, what I have to do is, let's see, what do I have to do? Next, I wanna, Start doing the um, the coolant. I'm gonna install the new thermostat. Um, I already have the radiator plug with the old plug. I um, I will flush it at least once, most likely twice. Eventually, I'm gonna replace the radiator plug with one of these. I like these a lot better. And of course, my gloves <laughs> are no more. But anyway, so I have to do this, this one, and uh, and I still am waiting for parts so I can actually try to replace this component with one that will actually work. 
So this one is broken anyway, so nothing to lose there. So that's my latest update. And I'm tired and dirty. Yep, Amazon Santa brought us some goodies. Good, because I need those parts. Good timing. Trying to get this hose to come out. I think I finally got it. I'm gonna try to replace it. I don't. I really don't know where that other end is. But anyway, there we go. Holy smokes! Wow. It's a lot of corrosion there. Oh my goodness. Wow. Someone didn't do very good maintenance, obviously. Wow. This whole motor's gonna have to be flushed. Yeah. to see stuff like that okay so this little guy is not gonna come out of there without a fight so what I'm gonna have to do is use the cheater bar I just want to clean that thing to the best of my ability see if we can get this one Oh, <laughs> okay, so this is going to be quite challenging. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, okie dokie. No good. Well, I don't want to start breaking things. So, okay. Let's see what we got here. Cool beans. Looks so much better. Good, good, good. With a gasket and all, and plugs, which I definitely need those. So that's good. Then gates, this, the, um, thermostat and I did order the 195 I don't know if you're going to be able to see that but I decided to get the um, the right thermostat for the vehicle calls for a 195 I'm gonna install that see how that works and um, Good, 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 good. And I just needed some, some of this um, copper anti-seize for high temperature applications. So I got a jar of that. Good. So all these parts are all corroded. They can be put in boxes and um, whoever buys the uh, 81 is going to get all these old parts they can decide if they want to throw them away I'm gonna get a regular plug instead of this contraption. I think this way you can empty the uh, the coolant a lot faster. So that's my take on it.
So a few days ago, I decided to remove this sensor. I clipped the wires. You can see it's a yellow and a black wire. And the reason I did this is because it's obvious that this one is broken. You can see how badly uh, the crack is at the base. I don't know if that would affect anything really as far as the sensing ability. But you can find these. I uh, did a little research and you can certainly find the uh, sensors. However, this portion I searched for quite some time and I couldn't find this um, part that is connected, connected to the wiring system. After a little bit of research, I found one that uh, would work, I think, just fine. So anyway, I ordered one from Amazon. Inside the box, what you have is... First, you have these splice connectors, which I'm not going to be using. Some instructions. You have the plug, which would replace this portion that is broken. And you also have a brand new sensor. So this one is a temperature sensor and sends info to the computer. That's its only purpose. You still have another temperature sensor for the coolant on the side of the block and that one sends the data or the information rather to the gauge in the dash. So they're pretty much identical size-wise. They are, they are the same size, same threads. I checked that. The prong here for the um, sensor, same deal. The big difference is how these make the connection and that is through this little plug here which is basically a weather pack and uh, you cannot install this in the wrong position which is great it only slides in one way and uh, it really insulates the, uh, the whole thing properly so anyway this one I think is going to do the, the trick and I figured they're not expensive. I'll have more info on it. Um, but it's going to be a lot better than this one, I'm pretty sure. The job is going to be, it's going to do the same job, basically. You're just going to be sending the temperature data to the computer, whether it's this one or this one. If this one doesn't work, I figured this one wouldn't either. This is all busted. I mean, this is not going to work, or at least it's not going to work properly. So I bought a 3 8 inch plug from the hardware store and what I'm going to do is plug this um, where the temperature sensor goes and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to flush the uh, radiator and so I want to get as much corrosion out of there as possible and I frankly I didn't want to get the um, the new sensor affected by by all of that uh, stuff thought why take a chance so of course after the fact I'm thinking I should have opted for this option and completely eliminated all this uh, I should have gotten rid of the computer and uh, replaced the uh, the distributor with uh, one uh, with vacuum advance. I mean, all you need is little line into the carb. It would have been a better option for under a hundred dollars. I could have done that. And I also, I, I would have eliminated the electronic carburetor. There's no need for that. And I have one um, 1705 here that I could have rebuilt. Could have, should have, would have. Never did it. So I am just rolling with the punches, as they say. And uh, so this will be installed once the, uh, the coolant is, is flushed 
We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I started the wires to the uh, new terminal, but I run into a little bit of an issue. You'll see here in a second. You see the little arrow? All of a sudden, boom, that little strand of wire kind of popped through the thing. I couldn't believe it. I've never seen that happen before. But anyway, um, you can see a close-up there of the area affected. So what I had to do was to uh, just use a little bit of electrical tape to insulate things and prevent headaches. Uh, the other uh, connection was fine. I, I also added some some electrical tape just to be safe and then I covered that whole thing with a piece of uh, shrink tubing so that that thing is, is finished and ready to be installed whenever ready. Okay, so the next step is going to be to use this Prestone cooling system cleaner. All the instructions are back here. Pretty easy to use. And after I add this, I'm going to fill up the um, radiator and uh, the block with, with water. So that is the next step. These funnels, by the way, are great to have. If you need to burp the uh, cooling system, this is the, uh, the way to go. So next I'm going to add water. I know that some people say, well, you have to use distilled water. I'm not mixing anything that is going to be used uh, permanently with the, uh, with the car. So I'm going to use tap water. It's fine. It's potable water. And I'm going to fill up the, uh, the system with that, run the, uh, the car, and then everything is going to be flushed. We'll see how that looks. May have to do this twice. Wait for it. I meant to do that. You just let it drink it up. Once you start the engine, it'll start circulating, so you can always add a little more. But again, this is a flush, so you know you read the instructions and follow them. That is the most important thing to do. The man is an expert. So what I wanted to do is do a quick recap of things that uh, I've done so far. And that, of course, includes the uh, fuel pump. In addition, I also drained the, uh, the coolant. So that has been taken care of. After that, I removed the thermostat, the rust rusted uh, water neck, whatever was left of the gasket. That is um, taken care of. And then, of course, I installed new parts, new thermostat. What else? I got everything ready for the uh, radiator or the coolant flush. So I added the Prestone. I also took the uh, opportunity to go over a few items like the, the EGR valve, which was totally clogged. So for the time being, because I don't want to keep spending money buying parts so what i did is i made out of a quarter inch thick aluminum i made this uh, delete plate it should have no effect or negative effect i should say when it comes to uh, how the car runs it has nothing to do with horsepower a lot of people think that by getting rid of that you're going to have a few extra horses it doesn't work that way so anyway that is that is the uh, the quick recap I wanted to do. I um, oh, I also shortened this hose a little bit because it was all chewed up at the uh, at the end there. So at least that is um, now connected properly. For the time being, I have this plug here 
for the ECM uh, coolant sensor. When when I'm done with the flush, I am going going to install the uh, the sensor. So other than that, um, I think that's pretty much it. I also fixed this um, plug here for the thermostat. So again, just a lot of little things. Uh, keep in mind also if um, if you decide to eliminate certain things like uh, vacuum systems and, and stuff like that, you're going to have to plug the carburetor and any other ports that, you know, may have an effect on how the car idles or performs. Alrighty, so in the next um, video, what I plan to do is to actually perform the, uh, the actual cooling system flush will get as much of the gunk out of there as possible. I was going to try to remove the block uh, drains. I looked both sides. I cannot find them. And I'm not going to keep on wasting time creating more work for myself. I'm just going to let it be. I hope that a lot of that uh, crud is going to come out with the first flush. I am thinking I may have to um, do two flushes to get everything as clean as possible. And uh, they're going to be the long flushes. It's not going to be just a 20 or 30 minute thing. This is going to be like at least an hour. Um, in passing also, I, I did add a cleaner to the, um, to the expansion tank here, to the overflow tank. And uh, I am going to drain that before we're, we put the new, um, the fresh stuff in there. Alrighty, so that is my latest update with the 81 vet. I appreciate you watching the video and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.